Hello guys, good afternoon. This is Miss Henderson. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. So um, to my returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for your cooperation. And thank you for um, being a part of this family. Um, it's a pleasure in providing you guys with um, educational material that can really help your journey. It really makes me feel, you know, it puts a smile on my face when I can um, really make a difference in the lives of others and helping students to um, pass their exams. So as always, um, today's video is about um, BLS recertification test review questions. So if you like these types of um, educational content and these types of educational material, please consider um, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like and share these videos. Please turn on your bell notification for upcoming um, educational material. I provide videos like once and twice a week with different types of educational material. And if you join this family, you can really um, be a part of this family and you can, um, you know, learn a lot. So that being said, please smash that subscribe button and the like button and turn your bell notification on. So let's look at some of these um, BLS recertification test review questions. So the first question I have here is when should you initially ensure that the scene is safe? So when you're doing CPR, when you come on a scene and you find a patient unresponsive, so when should you um, initially ensure that? A, after activating the emergency response system. B, after AED attached to the victim delivers the, sh the shock. C, as emergency medical services arrive on the scene. D, when I first see a potential victim. So the correct answer is D. So that's when you should ensure that the scene is safe when you first come across on a situation or an unresponsive patient because you don't want to perform CPR on a client and this environment, this scene is not safe. You don't want to do anything that will endanger your well-being. So when you first see the potential victim, that's when you have to um, establish that the scene is safe and before you can proceed to do anything. So D is the correct answer for that question. Let's look at question two. Question two states, where should you place your hands to perform chest compressions on an adult? A, on the upper portion of the abdomen. B, in the center of the breastbone. C, on the lower half of the breastbone. D, on the upper half of the breastbone. So the correct answer is on the lower half of the breastbone. That's where you place your hands to perform compressions. So C is the correct answer for number two. Let's look at number three. Number three states, what should you do after the AED delivers a shock? A, immediately check the carotid pulse for no more than 10 seconds. B, Immediately restart CPR beginning with chest compressions. C. Wait for the AED to reanalyze the rhythm. D. Provide two breaths to the victim. So the correct answer is B. Immediately restart CPR beginning with chest compressions. That's what you should do when um, after the AED delivers a shock, you don't you don't check the pulse right away. You resume CPR right away, starting with chest compressions. That's the correct answer. So question four, during two rescuer CPR, one rescuer provides chest compressions. What is the role of the second rescuer? Count compressions allowed? B, check for a pulse during compressions. C, 
do nothing until the first rescuer needs relief. D, maintain an open airway and give breaths. So the role of the second rescuer is definitely is to uh, maintain a patent airway or an open airway and give breaths. That's your role as a second rescuer. So D is the correct answer. Let's look at another question, question five. What are the compression and ventilation rates for, for two rescuer CPR in the presence of an advanced airway in an adult victim? So now this question is a little tricky, right? What are the compressions and ventilation rates for a two rescuer CPR in the presence of an advanced airway in an adult victim? A, compressions compress at a rate of at least 100 per minute with one breath every 68 seconds. B, compressions at at least 60 per minute with one breath every 6 to 8 seconds. C, compressions at least 100 per minute with two breaths every 5 to 10 seconds. D, compression at least 60 per minute with one breath every 5 to 10 seconds. So the correct answer and the key word here with an advanced airway in place, it's you compress it at a rate of at least 100 per minute, per minute with um one breath every six to eight seconds. That's the recommendation from the American Heart Association when you have an advanced airway in place. So A is the correct answer for question five. Let's look at question six. If we have another question here, I think, yes. Question six states, what is the maximum amount of time you should take to check for a pulse? So we all know it's 10 seconds. You have to check for a pulse for 10 seconds. If there is no pulse, you start CPR right away. That's the correct answer, D. Question seven. What is the best way to open the airway of an unresponsive victim with no suspected neck injury? A, use the tongue lift finger sweep. B, use the head tilt chin lift c use the head tilts only use a mask so the correct answer for this question if um to open the airway for an unresponsive victim that you did not suspect neck injury you can use the head tilt chin lift technique if you suspect head injury then you have to use a different technique but um, with this client, no um, neck injury was were suspected or anticipated, so you use the head tilt chin lift to open the airway. So B is the correct answer for this question. Question eight: Which of the following devices or techniques is not recommended for a single rescuer? to provide breaths during CPR. Now, this is a little tricky question here. Which of the following devices or technique is not recommended for a single rescuer when giving breaths? Bag mass device, mouth to barrier device, mouth to mass device, Mouth to mass technique, D, mouth to mouth technique. So it's A, bag mass device, because in order to use the bag mass device or the BMD, it's um you have to have a second rescuer. It's two rescuer. One rescuer gives CPR, and the second rescuer use the bag mass device to deliver breaths to the patient. So A will be the correct answer. Recommended for a single rescuer. The question is which of the following devices or technique is not so the so the keyword is not recommended. So it's A as in alpha is the correct answer for that question.
So guys, this is it for this video. I just have a few slides here on some um, BLS recertification. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and thank you so much for watching and um, all the positive feedback and comments. I am highly appreciative of that and continue to um, like these videos, sharing these videos and turn on your bell notification so you will not miss any upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now. I'll catch you in the other one. Bye.